Welcome to Heaping Spoonful, a twice monthly conversation with restaurateurs, chefs, growers, and others who have helped generate the legends associated with the eateries across the Mid-South. The team at Benny Keith is proud to sponsor this adventure with the goal of preserving the stories that have helped cultivate an amazing food scene across the Mid-South. So kick back and enjoy a Heaping Spoonful. All you food fans out there, welcome to another episode of Heaping Spoonful. I'm Kelly Bass, your host, and I've really loved getting the chance to visit with so many great chefs and restaurateurs from across the Mid-South as we've done these podcasts. Big thanks to Benny Keith Foods for giving me that opportunity, and I will tell you that I have learned that talking about food is much more enjoyable for me than writing about it, which I did for, gosh, more than 30 years uh, as a restaurant reviewer and a restaurant feature writer for two Little Rock, Arkansas-based newspapers, and then later for a couple of local magazines. So it's more fun to just talk. Uh, Today, our guest is Mary Laws of RP Tracks in Memphis. So welcome to Heaping Spoonful, Mary. I'm happy to be here. Thank you very much. Well, I will tell you that uh, I didn't tell you before this, but I went to college in Memphis and uh, spent a lot of time eating in Memphis. In fact, uh, not too far from where your restaurant is on Highland Avenue, I had my very first Euros at a place called the Varsity Inn, and uh, I was yeah. actually sit- I was sitting there in December of 1980, watching Monday Night Football, drinking a beer, and having one of those weird, wild Euro sandwiches when Howard Cosell told me that John Lennon had been shot. So I will never forget what. Ah. So yeah, but anyway, so I have spent time in your part of the world. So Memphis is a city and a food culture known for its barbecue. In fact, I would say Memphis can lay claim to being the barbecue capital of the world. And, you know, if anybody wants to argue with that, they're not going to convince me otherwise because Memphis and barbecue are just, they go hand in glove for sure. So it's really not surprising to me to open a Memphis restaurant's website and see, in the case of your restaurant, right at the top, RP Tracks, home of the world-famous barbecue tofu. Ah, tofu. So not to be too blunt, but, but what the hell? Um, well, so the story goes, the lore, that a bunch of college kids in the, I'd say, early 90s, like 91, mm-hmm. 92, were bored back in the kitchen, and they got some tofu, deep fried it, threw it in some barbecue sauce, and then they put it on some nachos, and... <laughs> And, and there was, you uh, go. That's how it was born. Wow. Yeah. And that was a long time ago, although it doesn't feel like it for, for somebody my age, but uh, that's much of the life of your restaurant. So, um, and I know you would not have barbecue tofu as a signature item if it wasn't really good. So tell us, is it still the same way? I mean, is it just tofu that you I, buy from, from Benny Keith or whomever and then uh, put barbecue sauce on it or is there more to it? It is. It is. It's, we strive very hard to keep the same type of tofu. Right. And so for the consistency of it. <clears throat> and so we um, use medium firm tofu. Mm-hmm. And n- there's nothing that we can substitute for it. Right. Um, firm or extra firm. It doesn't create that soft sponginess. Right. Of the tofu that makes it so good. But as far as the tofu itself, it's not smoked or anything. It's just you Mm-mm. just put some barbecue sauce on. Well, that's that's really cool. And uh, we're going to talk more specifically about several items on your menu just here in a bit. But there there is a pretty even balance between dishes with meat and dishes that are labeled animal friendly, which is another way of saying vegetarian. Much like the the, the tofu that the kitchen came up with in the early nineties, did the balance between vegetarian and, and meat focused um, the, uh, items did that happen over time or is that has that been going on forever pretty much or, or for almost forever I think Rick and Peter always had a grilled cheese sandwich or a right. garden salad so there was always an option for something without meat in the early days but it's definitely been an evolution. Right. Of growing the vegetarian menu, but also keeping in line with the meat eaters like 
that like to come in. Yeah. And and again, that, that's what I've I told you, I think, before we started recording. I really enjoy that choice. Um, and you and you get really creative with it. We'll talk more about that. So you mentioned Rick and Peter, and uh, they opened this restaurant in 1987. And being the brilliant uh, guy I am, I'm guessing Rick and Peter is where the RP came from. So, and I'm also guessing Tracks has because of the the logo of looking like a railroad crossing. Are you guys near the tracks? And is that where RP Tracks came from? It is right behind us. Ah, so it's you, one of the busiest yeah. railroads in the city. <clears throat> oh wow! Um, well, you got a yeah. You got trains whizzing by at uh, all hours, I guess. Correct. So there's an urban legend that in the early days of tracks. If the train went by, you got a free shooter. <laughs> um, <clears throat> but really, it was just a dollar off. Okay. So if shooters were a dollar fifty, then they were fifty cents, and so wow. it's always been a dollar off. Well, and that so still it, happened, or is that is that was that a, a long time ago? No, nope, it still happens anytime the train oh. goes by. <laughs> Oh, that's that's great. Well, I love that. that that's a differentiator. Um, when when did you? We we've talked about Rick and Peter, and uh, I'm guessing at what point? Well, I'm not guessing anything. I'm just going to ask. At what point did you come on board? 2004. Okay, 2004. And did you come on as an employer? Did you come on as? Did you come on as the owner? I was a server. Oh, you were a server. All right, great. Well, that. Mm-hmm. That's great. And how long, so you began as a server in 2004. Talk us through the transition of your duties and and when you became the owner. I had no aspirations of ever owning it, actually. Um, I went to school at the University of Memphis and got a lucrative degree in British literature. (laughs) literature. Well, Um, well, you're talking to an English major, so I know all of that. (laughs) Right. And then I graduated uh, in 2010, and that is when my husband mm-hmm. moved back to Memphis. He had started working at Tracks in 1997, okay. and um, he moved away right before I started working there in 04. Okay, and then he moved back in 2010, and the job market was just really crappy, and so I just kept waiting tables. And then we just kind of started taking on a few more responsibilities here and there. And then the general manager left. And then Rick and Peter came to us and said, do you guys want to buy it? Okay. So (laughs) it's been a team team effort. You and your husband have been at the helm since you, and when was that shortly after 2010 or was that, when did did that happen? 2015. 2015. Okay, cool. So yeah, we're eight still, years in. Well, Rick and you know Rick and they, they those guys did it from '87 to 2010. So they it wasn't like they wimped out early. They they'd done it a long time for sure. No, no, no. Um, they were and they stayed with us to help us the first few years. Oh, okay. All right. Well, then yeah, or to 2015. Okay. Well, then uh, yeah. So yeah, not not a not a rapid transition. So. You went to University of Memphis. There's more than 20,000 students there and faculty and staff. Um, you're right there by it. So obviously that's a ripe target. Do you all do anything in particular to, to market to people or, or do they just is word of mouth spread that people just know if you want to go to a cool place close to campus, that's the spot to go? It's word of mouth. Yeah. And we do literally? very little advert- yeah. advertising. Did, are you literally like a block away from the? We literally are a block away. Yeah. Okay. Well, I I, I went to Rhodes College, um, you know, in in Midtown, and uh, when back, I'm old enough that the drinking age was 18, and there was one of the when during freshman orientation, one of the bars on Madison came and put up a sign that said uh, dollar pitchers and free pizza, and then we all went there <laughs> forever because they were smart enough to do that, but. Well, that's great, and, and obviously they're a big part of your of your business. Although nowadays, I mean, you got to be a little bit deep into college to turn twenty one to actually drink. But I guess you can come in there and eat when you're any age you want to be. Yes, uh, it's. I would like to describe it as kind of a a college and neighborhood bar and restaurant. Yeah, yeah so um, good... we're kind of nestled into a neighborhood around the uh, university area. I see. So, so a neighborhood meaning residential. So you're you're commercial, and but you have residential around you. 
all around us. Yeah. Yeah, that's all that makes it fun too. And again, being a, a block away makes it even more fun. So, listen, you talked about being a college bar, and, and or is, is is sports a theme on? Uh, I mean, is no. I mean, we have a lot of TVs and show games, but people come to our restaurant for the food. Right. If the game's on, great. And if that's not really necessarily what it's all about, I got you. Right. And then you all, do you all have a focus on your drink program? I mean, is it craft beer, craft cocktails? Um, local, local, local. Local, local, local. Because there's lots <laughs> of good beer being created right there in your in your city. So yes. if some if somebody wants a Bud Light, are they out of, out of luck or do you keep a few things? Oh, no, 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 no. We, we, I like to say that Trax is kind of the starter bar. Okay. <laughs> so we, we've got to have things like Bud Light and... An easy Chardonnay, right? You know things, things like that. Maybe a White Claw in there somewhere, or oh, definitely, truly, or something. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but if somebody wants a, a a cocktail, you guys can make them up a cocktail. Absolutely. Um, I wouldn't say they're craft cocktails. Yeah, that's not really our vibe. Right, um, but we do have a Bloody Mary, or a, yeah, yes. No, we yeah. we make you a rum and coke. <laughs> I have had many a rum and coke in my life. I can promise you that. Cool. All right. Well, we're going to take a short break here on Heap and Spoonful. We'll be back in just a bit with Mary Laws of RP Tracks in Memphis. I hope you're enjoying this episode of Heaping Spoonful. We at Benny Keith Foods enjoy talking about the food scene almost as much as we enjoy providing the top quality ingredients that help restaurateurs and chefs across the Mid-South create their magic. Now let's dive even deeper into the culinary world with your host, Kelly Bass. All right, everybody, welcome back to Heaping Spoonful. Let's continue our conversation with Mary Laws. So a cool atmosphere, good drinks, something's on TV you want to watch, you can watch it. Those all set the scene for some some great food. So let's talk about your menu is good, and I, I advise those listening who want to know more about the about tracks, go go check out their website. It's really easy to follow. The menu is clear and, and straightforward, and you can get your mouth watering before you ever end up going there. So, let's start logically enough with starters. And and I see the top bill is is your chipotle hummus, which is uh, quote our signature homemade recipe. Tell us, I mean, it sounds a little self explanatory, but tell us a little bit about um, about that dish. Well, it's a uh you know, chipotle paste and but we actually make it in house from okay. tahini paste, garbanzo beans, the garlic, the lemon. We do all of it. And Sir, go ahead, I'm sorry. At some point they decided to throw some chipotle paste in there <laughs> and that's how it was born. I see. So so hummus transitioned into chipotle hummus. Cool. And is that yes. come with is that is that with pita with Yes. Yeah, ooh, that sounds good. And I saw also if you decide you want to go a little healthier and go with veggies, that's an option as well. Yeah, cucumbers and peppers, carrots. Sure, maybe a little celery in there. I've I've done that for self myself. And then uh, you know I'm from Arkansas, and you can't really have a restaurant. Of course, Memphis is about as close to Arkansas as you can get um, without being in it. Um, and cheese dip is a is a thing uh, in our part of the world. Do you um, you do it? I see straight up, or you can get some uh, some ground meat into it. What style is it? White is it? Yellow slash orange? What what style of cheese dip do you serve? It's a yellow cheese dip, that's, and that's we actually like... put our our homemade salsa in it. Mm, sounds great. <laughs> so it's it's got a kind of interesting flavor profile. Yeah, it sounds like it's got some zing. Well, I'm I'm all about the cheese dip, and you know, and and, and we've. You've proven, and it's been proven, not that it started in Mexico anyway, but people think about cheese dip in Mexican restaurants, and you can have it anywhere, and, and I have it. Right, and we deep fry our own fit oh, fresh I that. every day. That's a nice uh, commitment because I've had some pretty lousy chips. Uh, I've dipped some really good cheese dip with some lousy chips. So the fact yeah. that you're taking the, t- the time and effort and doing it every day to keep them fresh, that sounds fabulous. I see you've the got wings. Which, gross. <laughs> uh, I stale chips are gross, and sometimes, yeah, I've, I've learned I can, if I have home stale chips, a microwave will bring them back to life, but I don't want to have to ask somebody in a restaurant to do that. Oh, my God, that would be tri- that's <laughs> so embarrassing. 
You got wings in three styles. You got dry, you got buffalo, and seasoned. And uh, mm-hmm. it's kind of hard to have a bar in a cold beer without having wings. I see if people can also, again, they can sub pieces of tofu seasoned the same way. Um, is, is that, do, you, do people go both routes on that? Go. With, oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. I mean, I, I always ask people uh, in these interviews if, if you know, if, if people actually order that item and they don't ever say it, but it's like, if they didn't, we wouldn't have it on the menu. We would not have it. Well, I mean, sometimes you keep a menu item on there for nostalgia. Right. But we go through so much tofu. Wow. That's, that's really cool. Because that's a word that scares people that aren't re- very. It is. Uh, you know, it's not a. It's not something that people have had often, or if they have, it, like a lot of things, people are scared of. It usually means they haven't tried it. And well, like you, what isn't good if it's deep fried? Well, that's a good point. I, I think cardboard <laughs> might be pretty good that way. And then the, again, one of the ones that I saw, and I went and looked at some TripAdvisor reviews and things, and and people raved oh. about the 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 the, bar, the tofu nachos, and based on that must. That must be one of the favorite ways people have to, to have it because, uh, again, people have raved about the, the barbecue tofu on the nachos. It's really good with the jalapeno yeah. and the cheese and the lettuce and the tomatoes. and Yeah. It all just that, all makes it a make, rich yeah. dish. All the things that make nachos great and just has tofu instead of some other kind of meat. And then the same type thing, I see you do five types of quesadillas with meat, and you do four without. But there I, I saw something I hadn't seen before, because beyond besides barbecue uh, tofu, you have marinated tofu. So is that something that's what, – what's the marinade that, that gives that tofu its extra zing? It is water, lime juice, garlic, and cilantro. Okay. Well, that sounds – Straightforward, but uh, it certainly gives a little zing. It does. Uh, it really does. Yeah. Garlic uh, helps about everything in my book. And, and then, the lime juice gives it a bit of a bite. Yeah, I like that. Yeah, it freshens it up, brightens it up. Um, mm-hmm. You know, in doing these uh, these interviews, you know, one thing I've learned from a lot of people is you really can't go wrong with a good burger. Um, you know, that's a default for a lot of folks, but they they expect it to be good, and your burger looks great. I mean, first off, it's a half pound. Secondly, it's black Angus beef. Uh, is that something I'm sure burgers fly uh, out of your kitchen for sure? We go through so many cases a week. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, and our most popular one is the bacon cheddar burger. Oh, yeah. That's hard hard to go wrong there, too. Is it dressed? Well, my favorite is the steakhouse. And, and but, tell, us, tell us about the differences in those. I mean, besides bacon and cheddar, is it dressed just like you dress your regular burger, or is it something different? It is. Too? It and is. what about this? Just tell us about this. Commit. Tell us about the steakhouse burger. Mm, it's got gouda on it mm-hmm. and mushrooms, and it is just divine. I, I, it's just so good. Well, you know what? Nobody knows that better than you because you're you're right there all the time when they're making them. And so, if you're choosing it, it's got to be good. And you also, again, it's it's a broad menu. You've got a, a lot of selection of sandwiches and some interesting ones. In the animal friendly section. So <laughs> the vegetarian club not only includes the marinated tofu, but also hickory smoked coconut. Sorry, I'm whipping it back out. What the hell? Hickory smoked coconut? What's that what's that all about? Uh we basically take coconut flakes, mm-hmm. pepper them, add a little bit of liquid smoke, and then brown them in the oven. Oh man. Oh, and butter. With- who thought of that? I have no idea. <laughs> I came to work one day and they were like, look at this pie we got. And so we try to cross pollinate with all of our menu items. Sure. And so <clears throat> the coconut praline pie is where the coconut comes from. I see. And then there were some guys in the kitchen that were like, Let's see what we can do. What, what else with this coconut? <laughs> and that's what they came up with. Yeah. Well, again, they have a lot of autonomy I mean, back there. Well, that's good, though. You know, I mean, they keep things fresh and creative, and people want to try something a little different. That That's cool. And, and again, your sides look good. looks like you they come in two sizes, most things, not all of them. But I guess if you want some fries or you want a lot of fries, and, and same thing with tots, which I'm a, a tot guy. And um, 
But you also have a, a meat chili and a black bean ch chili. Are those pretty straightforward, or is there any kind of different takes on those? No, they're they're going to be a chili like you would expect. Mm -hmm. I, I love it. I'm I'm a chili guy because I like to put Fritos, and then of course I got to have some cheese and maybe some purple onion, and then uh, you know use a use a. I like the black bean nacho because it's a little bit spicier. Yeah. The meat chili is going to be like what you expect if you were to go get chili anywhere. Right. But I think so, the black bean chili is a little bit different. Yeah, I've got a little bit of a, a uniqueness to it. Cool. Well, you know, another thing I've learned in my in my uh, working on podcasts is that brunch is big business for many restaurants, and it looks like that's the case at, at, at Tracks. Um so you crank up brunch on at ten o'clock on Saturday and Sunday, and and the menu again easily to found on your website. It features some of the the Monday to Friday items, and then some some brunchier choices. So naturally, when you think of brunch, I think of brunch. I think of uh, libations. So we're all very familiar. I think you, with Bloody Marys, salty dogs, mimosa. What is a manmosa? It is Miller High Life and orange juice. <laughs> it's the champagne of beers. <laughs> oh, I, I think my very first beer was at Miller High Life back in the day. <clears throat> a man mosa, I like it. You got to be a man to, to to go that. So so so. All right, good. Well, that's cool. You've also got four Benedicts, which again, including portobello. You've got pancakes, French toast, chicken and waffles, and a burrito that, based on everything that's in it, has got to be a big burrito. Is that is it? Safe to say that's a yeah, it's uh you could use you could take it across the street and throw it as a football. Um, you also do pigs in a blanket, um, and there's a, a veggie sausage option there. Is that is that like a you use like a Morning Star product or something similar to that? I guess veggie sausage isn't that hard to find. It's Morning Star. Yeah, I have I have eaten Morning Star vegetarian corn dogs for a long time, and uh, I had a friend who served into her son, and he never knew the difference. So she figured she was giving him a little bit of better nutrition for sure. Um, tell me about the veggie rooster. What, what's the veggie rooster? Well, again, it's going to be the toasted coconut in there and then the egg. Or you can get scrambled tofu. And it's kind of like a bowl with mm -hmm. all this deliciousness. <laughs> yeah, And it like comes with a side of toast. Yeah, and so and you do omelets. Looks like a lot of a lot of choices there. So pretty much, if somebody's hungry for what they would consider between Benedicts and and the sweet stuff and the the bowl and then uh, the um, the omelets, you, and then of course you can also get you know two eggs and and with the sides too. So pretty is is brunch a, a big meal for you guys? Do you have a pretty good turnout for brunches? We do, and it is, and you know we've got more competition now than we've ever had. So, because brunch is so popular now. Right. And so, yeah. Um, I see you have a dessert of the day, um, and you mentioned a pie earlier. Uh, do, do you all just vary that thing based on what, again, what the folks are looking to, to make, or, or are there some standard desserts that are, is it one dessert a day, or do you have multiple choices? Well, we always have the coconut ice, ba ice box praline pie. Oh, man, that sounds good. It is really good. It's delicious. Um, and then we have a cook that loves to do desserts. So he's done a Simone pie. Yeah. He's done a French silk pie. Um, he did one with uh, Nutella. Oh, hard to go wrong with so, that. And he asked us to buy peanut butter today. So I have a feeling that Peanut butter pie is probably going to be in our future soon. Good. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm applause to him and all your creative folks in the kitchen. So, sounds like a fun place, a cool place, and uh, I appreciate you, Mary, for being my guest today on Heaping Spoonful. Continued good luck, good luck, and all that you're doing, and uh, great success to you. And uh, I appreciate you again taking time to talk to me there from from Memphis. And I thanks to everybody who's listening to Heaping Spoonful today. Remember that we put up new episodes on the first and the third Tuesday of the month. So keep an eye and an ear out for those and consider going back and listen to ones you might have missed. So thanks, everybody, and have a great rest of your day. 
We hope you enjoyed this episode of Heaping Spoonful. On behalf of all of us at Benny Keith Foods, Mid-South Division, please know how much we love connecting you with the legends of the culinary scene and their unique stories. I look forward to the next time we can offer you another Heaping Spoonful. Thank you.